All right, real quick, one more, one more video before I start my morning workout routine. Um, so the last video wasn't, that wasn't for Oz T, that was for the Choppa. Uh, so sorry for mixing those, you guys up. Um, so Oz T talked about rejection by, uh, well, so you got rejected by the Marines and now you're looking into the army because of age. That's exactly what I went through. Um, the Marines told me that because I was 32 years old and I had, uh, actually had three sports related surgeries. I had bilateral arthroscopy in my shoulders for what's called a subacromium decompression, which you can Google that, but, uh, pinched shoulders. So when I'd swim the, uh, I think it's called the bicep head of the muscle of the, of the bone was rubbing on another bone called the subacronium subacronium and the doctor helped create some space there no tear in the rotator cuff though it felt like it so that was both shoulders then i had my uh, partial meniscectomy in my left knee so not only was i old but i had three surgeries that's crazy uh so yeah i got rejected a lot but the great thing is um, I have 100% range of mobility in all my joints. So my surgeon was able to, to verify that. And then I saw a physical therapist for six months and he was able to verify that as well. That's what the military looked for. When I went to MEPS, those doctors then ran me through the gamut to make sure that I had a full range of mobility and I did. So that's awesome. Plus I have hyperextension in all, all joints. So that's really critical, especially because I like jujitsu and I get arm barred and choked out and you know, like ankle locks and all that stuff done to me. So I demand that I have full range of mobility plus hyperextension. Um, my physical therapist was shocked. Dr. Alex Kelso was shocked that I was able to get all that back. That was super encouraging. But anyway, rejection's a big part of my life in general. But uh, with regards to the military, don't be discouraged. Call different recruiters. Um, Sometimes recruiters move even in the same city for the same branch. So like one of the army recruiters had shipped out. And so I had to contact somebody else because the handoff may not always be there depending on where you are in the application process. Um, I always tie this into business as well. Rejection is super key to building a sales pipeline and business pipeline. And I am a cold calling expert. That's what I did all day in and day out for my own business. And then I consulted for other companies to help the, to help create a sales pipeline in their sales departments. So they would pay me to go drum up business by picking up the phone and calling to see who's interested in their products. Now, what I got to sell was RNA and DNA sequencing technology. So I was working with genetic engineers. Um, so it was a lot different than just calling a normal civilian population. I was speaking with PhDs that if, if I slipped up one scientific word regarding their publication history, they'd hang up the phone on me. So I had to, it was a very esoteric um, type environment. I had to know exactly what their jargon was, otherwise my relevance was zero. So I learned to, to embrace rejection um, because you can't let that discourage you. You gotta pick up the next phone call and if you sound like you were just rejected by the last one, nobody's gonna wanna work with you. So uh, it's really key to stay positive and that, translates very well into all of life really but specifically with the military um when you do feel as if you aren't relevant and you feel as if your age is going to play a factor again i was 32 years old when i shipped out for basic don't allow that to be on, on on your your mindset or in your mindset because maybe other people in your life will speak that into into your life and, and tell you i have people tell me that um even family say that oh the military's not going to want you you know, you're too old, you're damaged goods, you're not gonna be relevant to them, uh, you're gonna hate it, you won't fit in. I heard a lot of negativity, um, but I chose to then listen to the voices who would speak positively into my life. Lucky for me, some of my nearest and dearest friends were some pretty badass Navy SEALs. So um, there were two Navy SEAL officers that I would go to with all these questions that I had. Um, and uh, if you ever meet a special forces, anybody in any branch, please don't like let your first question be, what was hell week like? Cause that's just go like Google it. But if you treat them like human beings, they'll probably end up wanting to be your friend versus just like, hey, so tell me everything about the SF community. That's super annoying. Uh, but I, they had some phenomenal advice on um, how to stay positive through 
through the rejection and through the hard work that it takes to be in the military. So find people in your life that you respect, that you get along with, that are good humans and who are critical thinkers, hopefully some that have gone through the military pipeline and make sure that you filter out who speaks into your, your process throughout being in the military. So even when you're in basic training, even when you're in whatever it is, AIT or OCS or Bullock, um, have those key individuals that you consistently reach back out to and have touch points with them. Hey, so I was told this and this by so-and-so in the military, but you've been doing this for five or 10 years. What's your thought? Always recalibrate to the perspective of those that you really admire and respect who've either been in the military or who are actively in the military. That will give you such key stability throughout your decision-making process um, because throughout the military application, uh, just, just getting in, you know, what branch you want to go, what MOS, do you want to be enlisted, do you want to be an officer? There's so many pivot points and you got to kind of be quick to make those, those decisions. So having those conversations on the, uh, the front end will allow you to, to make your way through these different, these various thresholds that are going to be coming your way once you start getting in. Um, so yes, don't be discouraged by rejection. Let it put a fire under you, under you to keep moving forward. If you're pissed off, go to the gym and work out, go for a run, get some cardio in, use that energy, use it as fuel. Um, and keep making phone calls, keep championing yourself to get in and have some genuine conversations with, with people who are in the military. Whether So I found a bunch of them through a church I was going to in San Diego. Um, you'll, you'll meet guys at the gym, you'll see the, the haircuts and just go up and talk. You know, it can't hurt, it really can't hurt. Um, if you're passionate about joining, you're gonna find people around you to talk to and, and uh, it helps with the process for sure. Some of my best conversations came from like, there's an E7 or E8 that I met in the Navy. He was a firefighter. Um, he had one of the most profound talks with me and I just met him at the gym at the Y. And uh, oh man, you just hear some really cool stories and some very just human, the, the human element of the military manifests itself. When you talk to people who don't have any sort of agenda with you, they're not, leadership they're not a recruiter it's just a person who's who's serving or who has served um and that's those are the conversations that that absolutely put momentum behind me and put wind back in my sails to join because i want to work with folks like that i want that to be my my coworker, my peer my brother or sister in in arms in the service so um when you are rejected don't just sit on that alone pick up a phone uh, or go meet, meet with someone and ask them, ask them any question you want. Get the details that you need to continue moving forward. But understand that I was rejected a ton um, and I, I still made it through. I got a bunch of waivers done. My packet for MEPS was like a book. I mean, it was really, really thick. And uh, everyone else had just a couple sheets of paper and then boom, they dropped mine. It was all my MRIs and X-rays and post-operative reports, uh, and it worked out for me. So if I could, if I could get in and I'm still healthy, then anyone can. So take care of your body, take care of your mind and soul throughout the process. Um, be encouraged, and I'll try to keep putting out information because it's helping. So thank you for the views, and this one was for Oz T, and. Uh, why not for DeChapo as well? So, all right, guys, talk to you later.